Hey everyone, Drybread here. Pokemon Red with only one drowsy was a really fun birthday run. Let's follow that up with another fun one. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Yellow with a team of only gift Pokemon. So here's the list of gift Pokemon. Normally I do Pokemon Red in Gen 1, but Yellow actually has a lot of little differences in major fights, as well as some extra gift Pokemon so that'll help us spice up the run. Just looking at the list, we'll start with Pikachu and not get anything else until after the Rock Gym, so the start might be hard, but after that we should have a lot of fun options. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I can for sure beat this, but I'm gonna have a pretty fun time doing it, so I'm bummed. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Gift Pokémon. A Doubt HM Pokémon will be required for this run, but we may as well have the rule for the sake of being able to use Fly before Aerodactyl. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokéballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. No need for the Universal Pokémon randomizer on this one, we just went ahead and got our Pikachu. For the nicknames this run, I went ahead and tweeted out asking if any of you who follow me on Twitter like to stream. What they didn't know is I'm gonna just pick random people who replied to the tweet with their streams and name our Pokemon after them. So here's our Pikachu, named after our first random user, Green Clonk. He's been around for ages, so I'm pretty happy that he's the first one we landed on. In fact, if I remember right, he might have made it into one of the previous runs too. Maybe the unknown one? It looks like he's been doing some challenge runs in Dark Souls and Pokemon, and over on his YouTube channel that he linked, he's playing Mega Man Star Force, Dragon Quest Monsters, and Bravely Default. If those seem up your alley, then go check him out. So, the first part of this run is going to be a bit slow. The first gym leader is Brock, and although his Pokemon are lower leveled in yellow than they would be in red or blue, they're still rock and ground type. In yellow, they probably expected you to just go catch a Mankey and low kick your way to victory, but we only have Pikachu right now, so the fastest path to victory seems to just be learning Double Team at level 15. I know, Double Team is boring. You don't have to convince me. I'm the dude who actually has to play the battles with Double Team. Trust me, when I'm 15 tries deep into a gym battle and I still haven't built up six Double Teams once, I don't like the double team strategy either, but the sooner we can get past Brock, the sooner we can get to the fun parts of the run. At level 15, I give the Rock Gym a try. It starts well with us getting 6 in, but right from the start, I could tell that we might just run out of power points. It was looking hopeful against Geodude, who was actually going down pretty fast. <laughs> I mean, relatively at least in comparison to in red. As Onyx came out, it got more complicated, since I actually had to pay attention to the fight instead of just mashing A. He has Bide, so I have to make sure I don't use Quick Attack while he's using that. We got pretty far, but yep, ran out of Quick Attacks. Okay, I'll come back at level 20 with Slam. Not much to talk about with this grind. It's pretty slow, but I will say that it's easier in yellow than it is in red. In yellow, the Pokémon are a higher level here, so they're worth more experience, and there's also Pidgey and Pidgeotto in here that you can easily Thundershock down. In red, this place is awful because the Weedles constantly poison you, but in yellow, there's no Weedles at all. It's a boring grind, but I'm just thankful this isn't in red. At level 20, we come back with Slam. It's pretty inaccurate and not all that strong, but it's just strong enough to get us a very close victory. That honestly could have gone either way, it's all up to the double team and slam accuracy luck. Right before Mount Moon is a Poke Center, and that's the location of our next gift Pokemon. Weird to think that this Magikarp you have to buy is a gift, but it's listed as a gift Pokemon, so I guess the fact that it's literally a purchase and not a gift doesn't matter. The random name we got for this one is Mr. Chris Mad, and thank god we did, because it finally gives me an excuse to talk about the guy. He's been a great friend of mine for many years, and he's always done really fun work, whether it be on his own or with Viznomatic, another YouTube channel. It's fitting that he's a Magikarp, small and unassuming now, but will one day be the powerhouse of the team. Mark my words, Mr. Chris Mad will be a big YouTuber one day. His work ethic is too good, it's only a matter of time. Oh, and of course on my way through Mount Moon, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't tell you what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. By the way, in yellow, you have to fight Jesse and James in a few places, like the end of Mount Moon, but they're so easy that I took them out right after walking into the fight with half health. I don't think I'm gonna bother bringing them up much. Now that we're in Celadon, we can pick up our next Pokémon, Bulbasaur. This one's named after Faramir. Looks like he's been playing Mech Warrior, Blood Bowl, and Shining Force. 
Blood Bowl 2 is awesome. <laughs> I'm not very good at it, but it's fun. I've heard Mech Warrior is also pretty awesome, and I bet I'd love the Shining Force games just from what I know from them. I was a really big fan of the old Fire Emblem games on SNES and Game Boy Advance and stuff, so I think I'd probably like Shining Force. I went to his channel and watched some of his most recent stream of Streets of Rogue, and that's probably one of my favorite indie games, so if this looks interesting to you, give him a watch! Before going to the Rival, I decided to stop by the Water Gym. As Starmie came out, I sent in Bulbasaur to leech seed it, thinking that it would help. But then as I started using Tackle to waste time till she took us out, she just... didn't. Like, for a long time. She kept using Harden, so I just kept chipping away at her with Tackle and our leech seed. By the time she finally took us down, Pikachu was able to come in and finish it off quickly. Was she just randomly picking moves and I just got super lucky? After that is the first real rival fight, and this is in yellow, so he's got a different team. Spearow went down in one Thundershock, and for Sandshrew, I switched to Bulbasaur for Leech Seed, and then back to Pikachu as he went down. Thanks to Leech Seed's extra damage, we easily slammed him down. Retito was pretty easy to take down in a couple of Thundershocks, as was his Eevee. Wait, I just realized I forgot to do the optional fight from the beginning that gives him a Jolteon later. Oh well, it really doesn't matter, does it? North of Nugga Bridge is our next Pokemon, Charmander. For this name, we landed on Rising Feathers, who seems to be Rising Horrors for October. I love that. Looks like she's doing Pokemon Nuzlocks, so I'm sure you guys will like seeing, as you all ask me to do Nuzlocks, like, literally every day. Also, she's playing Final Fantasy for the first time. That's awesome. I watched some of her newest stream recording of it, and it was pretty relaxed. I like it. While I played this run, I actually watch a bit of the named people's streams and videos on the side, at least when I can find some. It's been a fun change of pace. Anyway, if you're into Nuzlocke, check out Rising Feathers and let me know what you think. All right, next up is the SSN. There's a Squirtle in town that we can get, but we have to do some stuff before Officer Jenny will actually hand him over, so we're gonna have to just do the Rival and Electric Gym fights first. For as decent as our type coverage is, most of our team are still very low levels, so I take the chance to switch train up the lower leveled Pokemon while I can. The Rival fight was easy as always. Outside of needing Ivysaur's Vine Whip to deal with Sandshrew, we could Thunderbolt our way through the whole fight. Thunderbolt is just a great move, especially this early in the game. At the Electric Gym, we have the big Pikachu versus Raichu fight. It was pretty easy though, we just paralyzed him at the start and didn't end up taking any damage until the very end. Right, it's time to get our next Pokemon, Squirtle. For his name, we landed on Dag, and I love that because that's actually another one of my friends from Viznomatic. Him and Mr. Chris Mad have done tons of fun stuff together over there. Looks like he's been playing Eastward, and although I have no idea what I'm looking at. It looks really fun. Super cool art style. Me, Dig, and Chris actually did some fun Dragon Ball Z uh, Xenoverse stuff over on the Viznomatic channel ages ago if you want to go check that stuff out. So our team is starting to fill up a bit. I haven't actually put much thought into what I want our final team to be in this run. I just know that I want to grab all the gift Pokemon. I haven't even decided what I want to evolve Eevee into yet. I'm just letting the challenge run happen how it happens. Once we get to sell it on City, I go get the HM for Fly right away and use it to go back to Pewter City. Thanks to Cut, we get the old Amber for the first time in one of these runs. Now I go back to Celadon and go get the Eevee from this dude. For name, we went with... Uh... Okay, so I'm not sure how to say this one, so I'm gonna go with the Twitter at KJelly with, with an I before the Y. He says he plays Rocksmith, so that's pretty cool. On his Twitch, I found World of Warcraft streams from like a year earlier, so if you're into that, check him out. Next up is the Rocket Hideout, so I take a chance to level up Rising Feathers some more. We've got a Grass Gym coming up, and our only Fire type is 10 levels below what they use, so we're gonna need to get some levels first if we want to win that on the first try. Giovanni has a different team than he would in Red, but he's still a total pushover. I think he might keep his Persian all the way till the ground gym battle in yellow, but I don't remember for sure. It's cool that there are differences though. Before leaving, I do the grass gym. Tangelo is first, and it wasted some of our time with bind and constrict, but we eventually embered our way through. Not that it was doing too much. For weep and bell, I switched to green clonk to paralyze it and then just kept slamming our way to victory. Last was gloom, but we missed our first slam and got put to sleep. Then she kept spamming acid, lowering our defense, and taking us out fast. Ouch. Back out to Rising Feathers and our embers just weren't doing much. 
We managed to get the knockout, but we were saved by a burn. It was really close. Before we can do Sylphco or the Koga fight, we have to deal with the Pokemon Tower. Fero is first, but one Thunderbolt took it down. For Magnemite, I sent in Faramir. After a Vine Whip didn't do much, I decided to just Leech Seed him. He hit some Sonic Booms and took out most of our health, but he did go down in the end. Shelter was next and Faramir was hurt, so I went back out to Green Clonk to Thunderbolt him down. For Sandshrew, I sent in Deg and used Water Gun. It actually did a great job with two shots. Last was Eevee, so we bit it down with Mr. Chris Mad to put the experience on him. Now, before we go to Saffron, I hit up the Safari Zone. It's got Surf, and we're in dire need of some moves that don't suck, so I grabbed it early. Our Wartortle kinda sucks right now, but I'll take what I can get. I might just stick with Mr. Chris Mad for the Water type, honestly. Water Onyx is awesome in Gen 1. Next up is Saffron City, so before we go to Sylphco, I go take out the Fighting Dojo instead. I don't have a strong preference between Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, they're both pretty cool, but I went with Hitmonlee since I already have most of the type coverage that Hitmonchan would give me anyway. I named him after Tricky Days. Looks like he's been doing some charity Nuzlocks on stream, so that's awesome. Again, I know you guys are into Pokemon and Nuzlocke, so this might be your jam. Alright, so our team is actually really underleveled right now. Like, in Pokemon Tower, we pretty much just have to have Pikachu do every fight because the Wild Gastlies could beat half our team. So I ended up using Sylphco as our chance to train up a lot of the team. There's no experience share in this game, just the mega useless experience all, and even if I wanted that item, it would take me so long to get that I may as well just switch train. This actually slows down the run quite a bit because we have so many more Pokemon to train up than in my regular solo Pokemon runs, so I decided it's probably best if I focus on just having two or three well-leveled Pokemon, and then the rest can lag 10 or 15 levels behind and are just there to deal with specific problems. We'll see how far we get in with that strategy. Alright, time for the Sylphco rival fight. Sandslash goes down in one Surf from Chris, and Cloyster goes down in one Thunderbolt from Greenclonk. As Magneton came out, we sent in Rising Feathers because I think Fire would be good against it, but then I remember that Steel isn't a type yet. Whoops. We landed some decent hits and burned him, but we went down. Out to Tricky Days, and we finished him off with a few double kicks. For Kadabra, I had Mr. Chris Mad bite him a couple times. He just used Recover and we outdamaged him, so he went down pretty fast. Last was Flareon, but Chris was easily able to surf his way to victory. After beating our rival, this dude in Sylphco gives us a Lapras, one of our last gift Pokemon. This one's named Myga Videl. I've actually known her for I think about two years now. She's got a really fun channel where she makes videos documenting her writing of a musical. I could probably do her whole intro right now, actually. <laughs> her Twitch streams are literally her writing the musical, so you get to hang out with her during the creative process. It's always a fun time, and people tell me that they have a fun time whenever we raid her, so go give her stuff a watch. After that is Giovanni, but he went super well as usual. He actually has less Pokemon in yellow than he normally would at this point in red. Dude didn't land a single damaging hit until the very end with Scratch. How'd he take this place over? Before leaving town, I take a crack at Sabrina's Psychic Gym. In yellow, she starts with a level 50 Abra that just spams Flash for some reason. After biting it down, we switched to Green Clonk, and I was gonna say the real fight starts, but then Kadabra tried to heal with full health and we paralyzed him. Then Sabrina used an X Defend? So we switched to Thunderbolt, but we went down in one Psychic. <laughs> well, that was brutal. Mr. Chris Mad was able to bite it down in two hits. Last was Alakazam, but is pretty strong, so we sent Faramir in, hoping to hit Leech Seed, and we do thanks to him using Reflect. Once Faramir went down, we sent Chris back in to do Dragon Rage. Didn't do a ton, so I used Bite after, but not before losing most of our health to Psychic. The Bite crit but still didn't take him down, as she decided that instead of using Recover, she should use an X Defend. With a sliver of health, well she seeded. Yeah, she threw that fight. <laughs> Alright, with that done, we just need to beat the Poison Gem so that we can use Surf outside of battle. This fight took tons of tries and it was super annoying because his Venonat spams Sleep Powder and if a single one hits, then the rest of the fight may as well be gambling with how random it goes. Gen 1 Sleep is nuts. We eventually got this clean run where we mostly just spammed Surf and hoped for the best because the one time we switched out, Green Clonk got one shot. Last was his Venomoth and he hit Psychic and Toxic early, but three Surfs took him down. It's just one of those fights where it should be easy, as long as they don't bury you in effects. 
finally, we reach Cinnabar Island, so I go ahead and revive both of our fossils. First is Aerodactyl. We landed on Cute Kitty Forever, or Bree. We'll go with Bree. Now this one's a wild card because she says she's a variety streamer and I can only find a grand total of about 23 seconds of footage on her Twitch channel, so I'm not really sure what to expect. I see a Discord link in the description and as tempting as it is to jump in there and say hi, I don't think I want to ruin the surprise of the video just in case she watches it, you know? So go there and check out her stream sometime, tell me what you think. We also revived Omanyte, probably the Pokemon everybody wants to be in this run for obvious reasons. For our last random name of this run, we landed on Andrew the Nerd. Between Pokemon challenges, shiny hunting, and speedrunning, I get the feeling that his channel might appeal to you guys. You know, I used to do some speedrunning. I used to do a little bit of speedrunning of the PC version of Silent Hill 2. It's really goofy, it's really glitchy, it's pretty easy to learn, and it's pretty fun to run. I'd recommend you give it a try sometime if you just want to get your foot in the door on speedrunning. Anyway, I went ahead and watched a bit of one of his newest streams at the time, and the dude is playing Pokemon Red and Pokemon Yellow at the same time with the same controller. That's pretty awesome, actually. Go check that out. <laughs> While we're here, we have Blaine's Fire Gym, and it's actually a challenge this time. Ninetales missed Tail Whip, and we got a one-shot with Hydro Pump, but next was Rapidash, and she locked us in Fire Spin, then hit a hard takedown. Hydro Pump crits for a one-shot, and last was RK9. We got outsped and hit hard with takedown, and our Hydro Pump didn't finish it off. Weirdly enough, though, he used Flamethrower instead of takedown, so we hung on and finished him off. I take it back. It's not a challenge. Blaine sucks. <laughs> right after that is Giovanni's Ground Gym, but like usual, it was a sweep. The best part is his Nido King did hang on from Surf, and he could have one-shot us with Thunder, but he used Guard Spec instead. Has a Guard Spec ever saved anyone? <laughs> you know what? Everybody give me your best stories in the comments about using a Guard Spec. I would be shocked if there's at least one fun story of someone getting saved by a Guard Spec. <laughs> Alright, last before the Elite Four is the rival again. Sand Slash was a one-shot with Surf, like usual, and for Execute we used Rising Feathers, but she's basically the same level as last time. We really had no excuse to do well considering we're 19 levels lower, and yet our rival played so badly that Rising Feathers almost took him down. Bree was able to finish it off though. Cloyster was a two-shot with Thunderbolt, and that knockout got us Thunder. Sweet. For Magneton we paralyzed him and hit Thunderbolt, but even a crit did almost nothing. I tried Thunder a few times before deciding it's best to just switch into Tricky Days. Naturally, our luck is horrible, and we instantly miss Rolling Kick, then get confused, hit ourselves, get paralyzed, and get finished off. Awesome. We sent in Chris to finish it. Kadabra is next and he's faster than Chris, but our bite takes him down in two hits. Not before we took about 120 damage, though. Last was Flareon, who went down in two surfs. That battle wasn't as clean as I hoped. Alright, after that, it's pretty obvious that we're not ready for the Elite Four yet. I don't think that we'll need to be a crazy high level, but maybe getting a few of our better Pokémon up to level 50 would do us some good. Getting Green Clonk and Bree up to level 50 should get us some pretty strong attacks to round out the team. I don't know if the rest will need to be leveled up that much, but it couldn't hurt to at least grind Andrew up a bit. It's hard to say. The Pokémon here aren't too bad to level up on, but because some of our team really isn't that high-leveled in the first place, it's not exactly fast. It generally takes a lot longer to grind a bit on a whole team than a lot on one Pokémon, but I can't complain too much. It's not like I'm using one Gibble or something. Again. <laughs> Here's how we're looking after the grind. It's not bad, but we're basically going into this with four Pokémon, since two are such low level. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. Dugong comes out first, so I started by having Tricky Days nail a high jump kick for a one-shot. Cloyster almost went down in one Thunderbolt, but we got confused and hit ourselves on the next round. She used a Super Potion for some reason, then we hit ourselves again. Brutal. After taking some damage to Spike Cannon, we finally finished him off. Next is Slowbro, and he really could have messed us up, but he just spammed Amnesia instead of taking us down early, so he went down. For Jinx, I played it risky and sent in Tricky Days, just to end up taking her down into one high jump kick. Last was Lapras, who hung on, confused us, and got us to hit ourselves a bit before finishing it off with a double kick. Not too bad! Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno, Surf takes down Onyx first, and we switch to Bree to one-shot Hitmonchan. 
For Hitmonlee, we actually missed Fly thanks to his double team. We lost half our health to a high jump kick, but we landed our second Fly for a knockout. The second Onyx was another one shot with Surf, and last was Machamp. Fly does great damage, and his Karate Chop actually doesn't take us down since it was a normal type move in Gen 1, for some reason. The next Fly took him down. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. Gengar was first, and she just kept using Substitute as we kept breaking it in one move. Weird. Once she can't use it anymore, she switches to Golbat that we easily take down with two hits of Surf. What is she doing? And then she sends Gengar back in to hit a weak Mega Drain and then go down. Awesome strategy. Next is Haunter, who went for Dream Eater while we were awake and lost because of it, and then was Arbok, who we just brute forced with Surf because why not? Last was another Gengar, but this one confused us, put us to sleep, and hit Dream Eater, so I switched to Green Clonk just to end up getting one shot by a critical psychic. Breeze up next and Fly hits Ghosts because uh, why not? It's basically tackle from above, let it hit Ghosts. It was nearly a one shot, but then we got confused and hit ourselves. We managed to fly after that, but we hit ourselves in the air, and then got finished by Psychic. Our only good Pokémon left that can hit Gengar is Mr. Chris Mad, so we keep trying to wake him up. Even after we did, we hit ourselves in confusion, but thanks mostly to her wasting chances to finish us off, we finally hit a Surf for the win. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. Water Onyx is first, so we just one-shot it with Thunder, and second is Dragonair. Tricky Days hits a high jump kick for decent damage before taking lots of damage from Thunderbolt. Double Kick finishes it, and we stay in against the second Dragonair. High Jump Kick did great damage, and we actually ended up surviving because he just used Wrap. As soon as he let go, we finished him off. Out to Mr. Chris Mad for Aerodactyl. We missed the first Surf because of Fly, and naturally got crit because that's just our luck, but one Surf took it down. Last is Dragonite, so I sent in Green Clonk to paralyze him. It started great, and we even landed a Thunder, but it doesn't do much before we go down to some Fire Blasts. Back to Mr. Chris Mad, and we nail a critical Hyper Beam to finish the fight. We really needed that. Finally, it's the Pokémon Champion. Sandslash was a one-shot, as always, and second is Alakazam, so I sent in Bree to brute force it with Fly. It did great damage, we survived a Psybeam, then bit our way to victory. For Executor, we used Fly a few times. We got Leech Seeded, but he still went down. Man, Executor's sprite in yellow is really good! Magneton is fourth, so I sent in Tricky Days. High Jump Kick crit and almost one-shot it, but he just used Screech, so we finished it fast. Fifth is Cloyster, who took great damage off Thunderbolt. He did plenty in return with Spike Cannon, almost taking Green Clonk down in one hit, but we had the speed advantage and won on the follow-up. Last was Flareon, but we have a great water type in Chris, so we give it one last critical surf for the victory. Well, that was a pretty fun run. We ended up at a reasonably low level, and we got some decent Pokemon to pick from, so it was a refreshing run. I really hope you guys liked that run. For next Saturday's Pokemon Challenge, we're going to go back to a standard single Pokemon Challenge when we try Pokemon Gold with only Mankey. I love that Pokemon. I used to put it on my team all the time back in Pokemon Yellow when I was a kid. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should play next. Also, check out the playlist in the description if you want to watch all the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, I'm not going to tell you where to look, because I want you guys to all go look up the stuff that I talked about in this video. You know, all the... All the channels I shouted out when I was naming all the, the people after them. I want you to go check all of them out. I don't know if I will have remembered to put all of those links in the description by this point. We'll see. But if I didn't, then tweet at me and tell me to go update the description. Thank you. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.